take responsibility for your life. Achieve fulfillment with recovery. Check out responsiblerecovery.net. Somehow during that 10 years, it went to an electrical trade school and was able to graduate through cheating, even though it was nodded out through half the class. Uh, so I'm a smart person, you know, just fully hindered by my addiction. Uh, uh, so I took the little diploma I got, and I went to a company in San Jose called Sunrun Solar Company, and applied. And they hired me as a you know ground level installer, and uh, you know I worked my ass off. Uh, I made a roof lead in four day, in four months, and then uh, you know foreman another six months after that. Uh, and it's really just by showing up, you know, the things I learned through the program, you know, through having commitments. Show up every time, 15 minutes early. You know, don't be the first one to leave. Uh, and, yeah, I had a job, and I had insurance through my job that I could put my kids and her on. Uh, well, just my kids because she was divorcing me still. Uh, and, uh, you know, I ended up, you know, telling her, I, I, you know, like I can't keep dragging her along, you know. Uh, I have to, you know, let her go, or I got to go for it. And I told her, you know, I will sign those divorce papers for you, but only after you let me take you out on one last date. And if you don't feel something or want to change after that, then I'll sign the papers for you. And in my mind, I don't think I was going to sign those papers, but, uh, you know, I I was, I was so convinced that it, it was going to work, that I was going to do something, and... Uh, you know, I, I, I planned the most amazing date. I got, you know, StubHub on my phone. You know, you got to think I never had a credit card or a debit card or a smartphone. I was never able to do these things. It was like, life was so new. It was like being a little kid and exploring nature, you know. And uh, so I got these tickets to this awesome show. You know, we used to go to a bunch of raves and, you know, electronic, you know, ra- you know music shows back in the day before... We were married and before, you know, my heroin addiction and uh, found this new this new artist and they were playing at the Berkeley uh, Greek Theater and, uh, you know, planned this awesome dinner and, you know, picnic and it was like the most amazing thing ever and, uh, you know, she had this amazing time and when we got back to, uh, I dropped her off and I said, I looked her in the eyes in the room and like, so Alicia, what do you want to do? And, you know, and, like, every inch of her body was telling her not to, you know, because I had fucking let her down so many times. I had I had given that promise that I am going to do what it takes, and I have changed, and I'm, you know, not using, and, you know, I had let her down so many times, you know. and But something, you know, something in her had seen the change that I had felt in myself, and she was like, we can, we can, we can hold off on signing the papers. And, you know, I, I definitely see the change, but you need to move back to Santa Cruz and stay clean for a period of time before I know I see it's real. Because, you know, in, in the program, they tell you, you know, if you, if you you're pull a geographic, you are likely to find the same thing. And to her, she didn't know that little saying. She just thought because I was in a protected area somewhere else, you know, there's dope fiends everywhere. You know, right next to San Francisco, and uh, could have got it if I wanted it, but uh, I was like, whatever you want, you know. And that's when uh, I called a friend, uh, in Narcotics Anonymous, and told him I needed to get into a sober living environment in Santa Cruz. And that's uh, how I got introduced to the Galt House. Uh, you know, talked to Frankie, the manager here, and uh, she got me in immediately. And uh, since I had already, I had like eight months at that time. She was very lenient about, uh, you know, when you first move into a new sober living environment, you know, strict curfew and uh, about your job. And you know, I already had all that. And I had people in the program that vowed. So she was very lenient with me and having my family and like getting to go see them. And, uh, you know, so I definitely can, you know, give credit to this house for. What, um, what were your, like, you know, you're getting back into your into your wife's life, and and likewise. But um, what about um, what about getting back into your kids' lives? Um. Yeah. So, it was it was a hard thing at first because 
my wife and I had to tell him that we were getting divorced. You know, we had held it off for so long, and I kind of ignored that. That you know, like we're getting divorced, but I kind of ignored you know about the kids. You know, and like I said, I still had felt that there was a chance. I didn't want to admit it to them that it was over for sure, but uh, man, I can't even explain what it was like to be a father. I mean, it, it came so quick and natural. Like, you know, I had patience for them. You know, when I was dope sick or using, like, uh, I mean, they took it back. They took it. They took back to me like I was never gone. But it, there was there was something different. I can't really explain it. But uh, you know, they they responded to me much differently. You know, you know, kids are you know very intuitive. They they definitely realize, you know, mom and dad are fighting and there's these problems and they don't know what and you know, you're 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 a king or god to them. You're the dad and your mom and it's like you, you trust them no matter what and uh I broke that trust with them without them really knowing, you know. And uh you know, getting back in their lives has been an amazing thing. I'm currently at a spot with that where I I'd never imagined being. But uh so I lived at Gold House for a while, and, you know, she let me move back in. And, uh, you know, because I kept paying bills and I kept showing up. And, you know, and you know, I had to explain to her that my recovery, especially in early recovery, has to be intense. And, you know, 100% they always say, you know, in recovery, you know, the first thing you put in front of your recovery is the first thing you lose. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to risk this, this gift that I had been given recently that I thought I would never have. Mm-hmm.